What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Bass Union. I've had a lot of questions how we rig our float and fly since the last video. So I'm going to show you guys today my complete setup. just pulled up to our first spot. I'm gonna pull out my rod. I'm gonna show you how it's rigged right now and break it down piece by piece. The float, the jig, the rod, line, reel, the whole shebang. So let's start off with a rod. We got it rigged up on a Dobbins Champion 792 spinning rod. I like this rod because it's a little longer than your typical seven footer, seven three. And that just means when you're working that fly, you're able to pick up that much more line when you get a bite. I'm just using a Daiwa Regal LT. It's a good affordable reel, good drag, picks up a lot of line quick. I have 10 pound braid and I got it in a white color so it's super visible. When I'm throwing it out there, I could see when the line stops when it, as it's sinking, I could tell everything. Then I have that tied up to a six pound fluorocarbon leader. This is called an everlasting slip bobber. I sharpie it up on the bottom half, including the straw. The straws are clear out the package. So I sharpie the straw black on the bottom and on the top, I sharpie it orange. That way it just really stands out. And then the biggest piece of the puzzle, um, this is actually a custom Bass Union float and fly. I've been making these for a few years now and it's kind of been hush hush under wraps, only, only available to a select few, but due to the demand, I had to bring them out. So when these are available, you gotta pick them up on the BassUnionFishing.com website. So I'm gonna show you how I rig this thing. I'm actually gonna take it all the way down to my braid leader. I'll give a shout out to my wife. She's behind the camera. Thank you, Liz. On this leader, we're gonna have about 15 to 20 feet. My favorite connection knot is called the Modified Albright or Alberto knot. You make a loop with your leader, take your braided line, put it through, pinch it, make five to six wraps going up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pinch this side, make five to six wraps going down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put it back through the hole. Follow where your line's coming in and follow it out. A little saliva, lubrication cinch her down. You want to cut this braid as short as possible. That way it doesn't get hung on your reel. And with this knot, you can, you can reel it into your spool without any issues. As long as you get it tied nice and compact, you're not going to have any issues. I like to put a tiny little bead. And what this will do, it'll actually prevent your bobber from damaging the knot that you're gonna create here in a minute. So you slide the bead down the line. And this bobber, it's a slip bobber. So there's a straw going all the way through and it's got a, a glass bead on the top and a brass grommet on the bottom, which makes it nice because your line doesn't cut into your straw and prevent your, your jig from sinking down. So slide it through. Boom. 
now this 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 bobber this float is free floating for, for slides up and down your line and then from there we tie a, a bass union float and fly jig on this is my color wakasagi i throw this religiously out here on lake orville you're gonna ask me joe Where's your knot? People that know how to rig this thing. No, I haven't put a knot yet. And I'm gonna show you a little trick that I do that a lot of people might not know about. So typically, what guys will do is they'll buy these pre-done knot. They're, they're just little nail knots on, on little coffee straws. You can buy them pre-done, they're just little pieces of yarn or nylon string. And these work good, but what'll happen is throughout the day, they they fall apart they come undone and going through your guides hitting your bobber it just they don't last that long so what i've found go to your friendly walmart get yourself some upholstery thread 100 percent nylon they got all sorts of different colors but this stuff right here super tough you could yank on it and cinch it down really tight but what i'll do is i'll take two long strings of it because it's too thin by itself so you need two of them all right and what's nice about this with that little that nail knot on the straw i was showing you you have to have everything undone and slide it up your line first and then cinch it down. With this method, I can have everything rigged up and all I have to do is go exactly where I want it to be, want that not to be. For example, let's say I want this thing five, six feet down. I know that's like six feet for me. It's so right there, that's why I want it. I'm going to make, I forget what the knot is called, but I'm going to double my line over and I'm just going to make a few overhand wraps. One, I'm do five. One, two, three, four. Four is good. And so I'm going to pull the line together. Let's lubricate a little bit. And with this, you can cinch it as hard as you want. So that knot is super compact. It's gonna go through your guides. That bead, all it does is it protects your knot from getting damaged. But when you toss your bait out there, as it's sinking, it goes down and then the knot stops it. And it holds that jig upright. And when you're working it, the hair it looks so lifelike. So what you do with that knot, you can adjust it and hit whatever depth that you want. So if you know your fish are sitting in five feet, 10 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, you're able to reach those fish because you have a slip bobber. I mean, I, I've caught fish down to 25 feet, 30 feet. I mean, the sky's the limit on how far you want to take this. So, you know, it's just a really simple setup and it's something a lot of fun. Even kids can get out and fish it because it's all visual. Um, you know, you're watching the bobber, you're waiting for that thing to go down. And something that I didn't mention is, um, you know, when you're getting a bite, usually you'll see this bobber start to sink. It'll go down and you know, okay, that fish has got it, and he's taking it under. But sometimes, when you know this jig is at the bottom, the bobber's at your knot, and it's suspended, if your bobber, all of a sudden, your float turns sideways, that's what they call a lift bite. So that just means the fish has got it, and he's holding steady where he grabbed it at that depth, or he's come up slightly. And when that happens, your bobber, it just, it turns, it turns sideways. 
And when that happens, set the hook quick. Reel your line, set the hook. Because a lot of the times I've noticed that, that that's the big one. This is how I have it rigged out here on the West Coast, Northern California, and I've had a lot of success with it. I've cashed a lot of checks, you know, seen the damage that it can cause. So I hope some of these tips have helped you guys. Like I said, I've had a lot of questions since the last video on how I rigged this, this float and fly, but it's something that can put some big fish in the boat when you know where they're positioned and you could just dangle it in front of their faces. Hope you guys like this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and we'll see you guys in the next one.